Okay, so welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a short slash interesting one as we have the um, integral, the improper integral over the positive real line from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x squared minus e to the negative 1 divided by x squared plus 1 dx. So I think you'll notice something that's pretty like clear off the bat. We have something of e to the negative x squared. And if we take the integral of that, then proper real line, we know that that is indeed the, the Gaussian integral. And because we have minus and plus, so a strategy we can actually utilize is we can actually split this up into like terms of um, inter a, a sum of integrals using, you know, the properties of linearity. So that would have to justify and say that we already know a part of the answer. So now what it is left is we have to figure out the other part, specifically these two terms over here. But in order to solve these two integrals that's actually going to be combined together as one integral, we're actually actually be using a little bit of a knowledge use, utilizing the Gaussian integral as well. More to the fact that it's the knowledge that, um, to the value that we will be utilizing that. So, and, um, because of, because of me mentioning that, so there's actually going to be something we're going to be using a little bit of uh, a generalization integra integral that we want to, you know, solve for that actually utilizes the Gaussian integral value. And then once we get that, then we can actually evaluate this entire thing itself aside from not only just solving this term over here. So with that out of the way, why don't we actually just jump right in. So as mentioned, so if I split this up into a sum of integrals, so the first thing we'll be utilizing is that this is just e to the negative x squared dx. And then now next thing is that we're going to add this with the integral from 0 to infinity. I'm going to move the 1 up to the front, and then we have a subtract e to the minus, um, minus 1 divided by x squared and then dx. So of course, we know that specifically this value over here, the first one we're dealing with is that this is actually going to be the value of the square root of pi divided by 2. So if this was the, re the entire real line, then that basically means that that's just square root of pi. Notice that this is specifically an even function, so this is actually half of that value of the improper line. So with this, we have just this value to solve for. So in other words, I'll just put this as, so the square root of pi divided by two, and then add this with the integral from zero to infinity of one, and then subtract e to the negative one divided by x squared, and then left with dx. Okay, so now here's the thing we'll be doing. So let's actually do a little bit of a u substitution over here. So for our substitution we'll be using for this integral over here, let's suppose that we'll let u equals one over x. And so that means now by differentiate both sides, so that means I have du is going to equal negative 1 divided by x squared and then um, dx. So of course, the trick is that we want to get this by itself or just dx to do that substitution. So in other words, negative 1 over x squared, if I set that equal to u, so in terms of u, I have that du is going to equal negative u squared and then dx. Then I'll just divide the negative um, u squared to both sides. So I have that dx is going to equal just negative 1 divided by u squared and then du. So if I substitute this back into over here, so now our new integral we're dealing with, so okay, so the square root of pi divided by two, add this with the integral, so change our bounds, but thankfully, actually not this case. If I plug in infinity, that's gonna approach zero on the top, and if I plug zero, that's gonna approach infinity on the bottom, and now what that's left is, so I have one, and then subtract, so this is gonna be e to the negative u square, and so substitute the dx differential, so that means times negative one divided by u square, and then du, and so in other words, if I substitute, um, simplify this out, I mean, so I have square root of pi divided by two, and then if I have to change our bounds, so zero's on the bottom, infinity's on the top, so that's a negative, then that negative over there will cancel, so that'll be a plus, and then we have our integral from um, zero to infinity, of one minus e to the negative u square and then divided by u square and then du. All right, so now this is a this is imposed a bit of a challenge on how we are um, supposed to solve this integral over here. So remember the generalization um, integral that we're gonna solve for? So this is where this step comes in. So our generalization that what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this capital I sub A for the value A, the parameter A. We're gonna let this be the following. We'll let this be the integral from zero to infinity of one minus e to the negative a times u square, and then divided by u square, and then du. So with that being the case, so that means what our value over here is that this is actually, um, when you plug a is equal to one, so we have i sub one that we're trying to solve for. All right, so now what we'll do here is I'll actually take the differentiation, um, the derivative of both sides, so that means using famous trick, we're differentiating inside of the integral. So doing so, so I have i 
i prime of a is going to lead us to just the integral from zero to infinity. So this is the only thing we have to take the different um, the derivative of. So that means we just apply the chain rule. So that means now this yields us, which is e to the negative a times u square, and then du. All right. So now with this being the case, so let me actually just reiterate again over here, just to move the top line right over here. So zero infinity e to the e to the power negative a u square and then du. So now our u substitution, so let's actually call this um, capital T. We'll let T equals, what is it? Um, the square root of a and then multiply with u. So that means dt is going to equal to just the square root of a and then du. So if I just plug this back in, so i prime of a, so now our new substitution over here is that so let's see if I plug this in, we have our bound, so that, that's still gonna be the same thing from zero to infinity. And then next is that if I just plug this back for t, or if I solve for u by itself, so that means t divided by the square root of a, plug this back in, so that means this will yield us with e to the negative t square, and then this is divided by the square root of a, and then dt. So now if, um, of course, e to the negative t square, we actually know that um, doesn't matter what the dummy variable it is, but that's actually still considered evaluating a Gaussian integral, but then you multiply this by one divided by square root of a, and so that yields, yields us with one divided by two multiplied by, um, so I'll write it as the square root of pi divided by the square root of a. All right, so now the next thing is that if I were to plug in a is equal to zero, then that means i sub zero is indeed going to equal to simply just zero. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to take the indefinite integral. So that means I'll actually integrate i prime of a will just yield us back to i of a. So that also means implying that I have to integrate um, this function over here. So then that means i sub a after performing the integration is going to yield us with just, so this is a square root of pi and n times a, and add this with our constant c. So of course, if I plug in zero back into here, so that means it's gonna equal zero, and if I plug in zero back here, that's zero. So we can see that the constant C is going to equal simply just zero. So therefore, I sub A indeed is just gonna equal to the square root of pi 10 times A. And so the function we want, the integral we want to calculate is this following. So this is basically saying I sub one is the same thing as back to over here. So that means I have, that means, um, so I plug in I sub one is equal to simply just the square root of pi. And so therefore that the final answer is that this is going to yield us so square root of pi divided by 2 plus the square root of pi is therefore equal to 3 divided by 2 times the square root of pi. And so therefore that is our final answer to everything here utilizing you know our knowledge to the Gaussian integral and just like that everything that comes into play we actually use a nice little generalization to help us you know achieve the following over here just like that. So yeah that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.